So uh, I want to thank my colleagues because this is really great. The votes, I guess, have just started. They just started. So that's really good. I want to thank all you commissioners for, for coming here today. And we're going to have you back real soon because there's many more issues we didn't get to. Uh, specifically, we're going to go in the next hearing. Uh, we're going to look at more of the transparency by commissioners. We're also going to uh, look at the 12 recommendations that were made post Fukushima for safety by your own staff who between them all had 150 years of experience who laid out 12 things you should be doing, you should do. And at that time, uh, there was a hope in the commission to get those things done in five years. So Fukushima was March 2011 and March 2012 was passed in March 20. 13 and we're approaching March 2014. My understanding is there's one rule out of the 12 and everything else is in uh, stages. I also found it very interesting to talk about cost benefit and we are going to make public your vote because you don't seem to mind on who voted which way. My understanding is chairman you voted with everybody else not to do, uh, I mean everybody agreed not to do the two person rule so that just to remind you, jog your memory. We found that um, in the public record somewhere. We dug for it. Um, so, so the issue is that your own staff, who had 150 years of experience, said, get these 12 things done. Don't do a cost-benefit analysis. Because the cost of Fukushima, might I remind you, is pretty much immeasurable. And the benefits of avoiding that is pretty much immeasurable. But no. You're doing cost benefits on everything. So I'm going to find out from you next time, all of you, the status of each of these 12 recommendations. And I hope you can move forward on them. Um, that is very, very critical. The other thing, I'm going to put in the record, Madam Chairman, a letter that I just got. As you delivered, you signed it, this next tranche of information. And your answer to me was, well, if you still have a problem, call me. I have a problem. Because you asserted some kind of a legal bar to your giving me everything. I don't know. Is your general counsel here? I've never met her. Is she, is she there? Could I meet her, please? Just identify. She's here, Margie, no. OK. Um, I think it's important that you talk to my counsel and that you also speak with those who advise us. Because our understanding is the privilege that you are suggesting is absolutely off the wall. And our understanding from every legal expert here is that you can assert uh, executive privilege or your Fifth Amendment right not to incriminate yourself. And you're talking about some separation of powers. Well, the arrogance of that is unbelievable, because you wouldn't be here without the Congress. You wouldn't be here without the Congress setting you up. You wouldn't be here. And you have to be subjected to oversight, and we have a right to documents. And when you sit there, and you tell me, and you tell Senator Vitter, you're going to hand us all the documents we want, and then you don't, and then you say very sweetly, oh, I'll be happy to find out what's, if you, if you need any more, Yes, I need them all. And I need to know what whistleblowers are saying. I need to know that all. Because I swear that I will uphold this Constitution and defend and protect the people that I represent and the people of this country. So this is not a good relationship. And it, it certainly isn't. I feel very bad. It's not personal. I'm sure we, each of us could just be very friendly on a personal level. But that's not what this is about. It's about openness and transparency. It's about safety. It's about accountability. And for you to withhold documents, which you admit that you are doing based on some phony legal argument, is, is beyond the pale. Maybe it winds up in court. Maybe we sue you. I don't know what we do. I want the information, and I will get it even if I have to go to whistleblowers. But I'm just telling you, get me the information. Because when I have a situation where a plant was obviously 
in a dangerous situation, and even before the inquiry, there was a staff opinion to let it go and open it, and I can't find out why and how. It's just wrong. So I, I'm really sorry that this continues on and on. I thought maybe with a new chairman and a new spirit here, things would change. You know, but whether it's your travel that some of you don't even you want to have buried, you asked us to make it confidential, don't tell people what we spend. What is that about? You're not above the American people. I want you to travel somewhere. I want you to go to Japan. I don't know, some of these other places look like they're really fun to go to. I don't know how much they have to do with anything. But I, I, I'm hoping that you would go back and talk to each other and instead of going back and saying, oh, that barber boxer, ooh. You have a right to do that. But I hope you will also change your attitude about openness, transparency, about moving a little quicker, to have adopted one out of these 12 recommendations, I don't, I don't uh, understand it. 